All right, so today we're gonna to go over uh, Fourier transformations of complex scalar fields. And so, yeah, so let's get right into this. So I'm gonna to get to, the, this is I think gonna be a fruitful, a fruitful video and um, we're gonna get down to the punchline here eventually, which is all these color-coded guys down here. But let's go through the math first, right? So we wanna be able to be comfortable with the math. We wanna be able to understand uh, what we mean when we're going through each step here. So let's start. So I'm forcing us here to recall the discrete solutions to the Klein-Gordon equation, right? So the, again, these are things are solutions to Klein-Gordon equation. And I just have them rewritten out. We have, the, we've done this, I think for the past two or three videos now, right? The analogous, so, so this is interesting here. So th these are all sums, right? These are all discrete sums. We can do something very similar where we say, you know, what if our solution is a continuous wave, right? Here, here, this is a sum of, this is a discrete sum of waves. Here, uh, we could have a continuous um, solution, or a continuous set of waves that are, in which we use integrals instead, because remember, integrals are more of a, conti are more of a continuous object than uh, these sigmas here. Here we're adding up waves for corresponding uh, for corresponding um, values of k. And in this here we're doing the same thing, integrating over k. But it's it, this is a con this is continuous. So we're assuming very small k. You, you might you might want or small intervals between different values of k, if you will. Um, okay, so and we have this right here which is somewhat analogous to this right here, this factor right here. And we'll see why we do this, right? So I'm going to, uh, uh, we're going to propose, okay, you know, this is the, this is, these are my continuous solutions. And I'm putting this right here. I'm going to say, I'll put this right here. I want to see kind of what, just what happens, right? Um, and we'll see why it's useful to have this sort of normalizing factor in our solutions. Okay. All right, so let's begin. We are going to start off by considering this object right here. So this is this is kind of like a mathematical object, if you will. This here looks like a Fourier transformation, right? Because I'll just skip down here really quick. Our Fourier transformation, if we want to go from position space to momentum space, um, we do something that looks like this. Right, this is a, a Fourier transformation of our um, of our field. Okay. Um, so we're kind of doing the same thing here. Uh, here's our field. Here's the thing we need for the Fourier transformation, and we're integrating over uh, this element right here. Right? And we see if we go down here, we're doing the same thing, we're integrating over this x right here. This right here. Okay. All right. So this is really just a plug and chug thing now. So this right here is this right here. But we notice there's something going on right here. So what is this thing that's going on? Well, we had, we're, we have this, right? So we're really kind of just taking this guy and multiplying it by this guy and then we're gonna then we multiply it by this guy right here and what we get is this right because um, we have this minus right here and then this guy's a positive and uh, this guy's a positive so if we in the end um, if if you foil this all out uh, you notice uh, that th it should be when I distribute this minus to this guy right here, that'll make him a positive. That's why he's positive. And then this guy is negative right here, which is right there. Okay. I hope that makes sense. I'll zoom in a little bit. And we kind of just do the same thing for this guy right here, right? So this really, this here is really a combination of this, right? Then we have our 
this right here, which is right here, and we have this normalization factor that came from right here. All right, so, so you could sort of dwell on this for maybe a couple minutes, and I, I think you'll be able to see it eventually. All right, so now we... Uh, so this all stays the same. All right, so now what's going on? Now I'm just separating the time and spatial components from each other. Right, because the time and spatial components are going to have um, different signs from one another. Um, and we've seen that in the past. So we have this right here, which is right here. But then we take out its temporal component. Right, and when we take out the temporal component, we're, we're really just changing the sign. Right? Same thing here, we're just changing the sign. Okay. So that is, uh, so from this step to this step is, this is basically taking out or factoring out our temporal component. Okay. Now, now we have some definitions. I haven't gone over these definitions, but um, these are definitions in the lesson. I can go ahead and prove these in a later video right here. But this is why we have this normalization factor, right? This normal, this right here, this right here is the definition for the current, for the Kronecker Delta, right? You might, you might think, okay, well, why? Well, why is this, why is this definition so? Well, if you remember from Fourier transformation, this, this here is a Kronecker Delta, right? This, we're going from, uh, this is a wave of a particular frequency, and that frequency is encoded in this information right here. Right, that's this. That that's the, the frequency is encoded in this information right here. Right, so when we're doing this, we are essentially uh, getting a spike. This is a a, a spike. No, that's not. A, I'll do this better. A spike that looks like that, and that's this right here. All right, so we have a wave. And we want to take, we want to understand what its frequency is. Well, its frequency is located at some point, um, and it can be described by a delta function. Similarly, we got the same thing going on right here. And this here is sort of embedded in our Fourier transformation definition. That's why we have, that's why we propose this up here. Okay. Um... Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look. And so, so I have this right here. This is why we do this in our original solution. So that's the, this is the original solution. Okay. So now we want to apply these guys to this guy right here. Okay, so, but, so, okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to apply this to these, this right here. Right, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to say, well, here is this guy. Right, so I'll zoom in a little bit more. Uh, so we have this guy right here and the same thing right here. And then this guy right here and this guy right here, right? So we're kind of plugging and chugging, right? So we have literally just plug this in so this becomes that delta function and this becomes that that delta function also so we have this and this right so to get from this step here to this step here i literally just used this definition of the fourier transformation of a wave at a particular frequency and we extract a spike at that frequency that's again that's what these things are saying these are uh, this is a Fourier transforms uh, uh, taking at a specific frequency, which is this. Okay. Uh, and then we also have that, again, we have that normalization factor. And so we make that replacement. Now, if we remember something about the delta function, the delta function, this right here, is 1 if k prime is equal to k and zero 
if k prime is not equal to k. So this selects for k, right? So this, uh, this, and we'll, so we'll see that, okay, so if this is this, then um, we're going to select out uh, k. So we're going to say that, um, sorry, there's a little bit of construction going out uh, um, near me. <laughs> And so, again, this is something of a definition for, um, for this guy right here, okay? Similarly, we can do the same thing for plus, right? So, this is the same thing as minus negative k, right? So, now we have this minus form, right? So, and this is just going to be k prime, if, if k prime is equal to negative k, then we get 1. And if k prime is not equal to negative k, then we get 0. And this, so this is a process of selecting out for negative k. Okay? <laughs> okay. All right. And so what we get is... Let's see here. So the negative k. Okay, well, this becomes 1. All right, so there's like a 1 right here. And then we want to switch out the negative k for in here. Because we're going to be selecting out for negative k. That's why we get this right here. And then we're left with... Uh, well, this becomes 0. This also becomes 1. Because we're going to say that ome the omegas are also equal. Right? And this becomes 2 omega. So that's this right here. Right? And then we have our, um, our this right here, our normalization factor. Again, because that came from right here. So we didn't want to forget him. We're left with this right here. So we have our four, the Fourier transformation of our solution in terms of the coefficients. And this is something that we're going to be interested in doing a lot, is we're going to want to try to find a lot of things in terms of the coefficients, right? Because the coefficients are things we'll be able to know, and the coefficients are objects that we'll be able to apply later when it comes to uh, many body theory and so these things are very very useful to know and ve they're very if we can know things in terms of them then we'll be able to cap make calculations a lot uh, not perhaps not easier but make them more understandable right so we can go through a similar process and find this right and then I illustrate the same exact process here to elucidate or to discover this right here. This is for the complex field, the complex solution. And this is for um, the conjugate of the, of the canonical momentum, right? So we have canonical momentum, conjugate, con conjugate to the canonical momentum, then we, ha and then we have the solution, the conjugate to the solution okay and then these guys here if we literally take this as a, for a definition of a Fourier transform we can see that we can replace if we replace this guy with a k we get that's this right here right and you can stare at this for a while to see how we get from here to here but that is for a transform of a complex scalar field in a nutshell. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. All right, bye.